Good morning, grade 12. Welcome back. I hope you had a lovely holiday and I hope you're ready to tackle your matric year. We're really starting this off on my favorite section, organic chemistry. Obviously, this falls into chemistry. It's our first massive chemistry section in matric. And guys, organic chemistry takes up approximately a third of your chemistry paper. So you need to understand what's going on from the beginning, but it really is a lovely section. You guys will enjoy it. Okay, so I'm doing this a bit differently. I've got PDFs. Um, this document Mrs. Bradal made, I will let you guys know when to write down what. Okay, so we're doing organic chemistry. So, organic. Let's start with the word organic. When you hear the word organic, what do you think of? Surely you think of wholesome things, natural things, like you probably think about greenery, and that's true, that stuff's all organic. But what about this kind of stuff? Like vinegar, and petrol, and coal. What do you think? You think that's organic? Surely the answer should be no, but actually, these things are all organic as well. They are comprised of organic molecules. So, the reason for this is organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon compounds, okay? So, carbon is an important keyword here. Carbon. All of these things are made up of carbon. So, this is your first big definition that you see on the screen right now. Organic molecules are molecules containing carbon atoms. And I need you to write that one down. As you'll see, it's here on your exam guidelines as well. Organic molecules are molecules containing carbon atoms. So now we're going to look at why carbon in a moment. We'll look at why carbon is so important. But here's an example of an organic molecule. So what you're seeing now is methane. So this compound over here is methane. You'll see it has one carbon atom over there attached to four hydrogen atoms. That is called methane. That will always be the structure of methane. And the reason why I, why I have cow farting over here is because methane is basically the component found in cow farts. Okay? So methane, why this is so bad, is because methane is a very um, important greenhouse gas. And as you know, carbon dioxide is another greenhouse gas. If you do bio, you'll know this. And greenhouse gases contribute to global warming and methane is actually a huge contributor to global warming and one of the things that is contained in this cow farts so apparently we eat meat we mass produce meat which means we need cows and all that those things and cow farts cause global warming anyway interesting fact that's methane we will be looking at methane again okay there we go burps containing a lot of methane farts containing a lot of methane, feces which decompose containing a lot of methane and that is why they contribute to global warming. Interesting, okay cool. Here's a compound that you all, we all should be familiar with, Panado, but if you look at that you might think, but ma'am there's no carbons there, Just I thought you said that organic chemistry is a chemistry of carbon compounds. Um, this is university, we won't do this now, but basically every little corner over here so there's a corner, there's a corner, every little inter point of intersection is a carbon compound. So basically this is the, comp the how Pinata is composed, oxygens, nitrogens, hydrogens, carbons in a nice little, what's that, a eh? one, two, three, four, five, six hexagon. Okay, so organic molecules, there are millions of different organic materials and substances on earth and this is because carbon is so amazing remember earlier on i said it's all about carbon 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 and then i said why is carbon so special so this is what we're going to get into now now you don't really need to know this for exam purposes but i want you to understand it so what makes carbon so special if you look at that cartoon carbon on the board it has four arms now if you think back to bonding of last year think about carbon what does carbon have Okay, one, two, three, four. For what? If you look at the periodic table, there's carbon. One, two, three, four. Carbon is in this group, which means it contains four valence electrons. Do you remember that? So these ones contain one valence electron. These ones contain two valence electrons, three valence electrons. And then the group that carbon's in has four valence electrons. So carbon has four valence electrons which means that it can make four bonds, okay? It can make up to four bonds. Because remember, here's a carbon, one, two, three, four valence electrons. If I were to bond with this carbon, for example, and I'm a hydrogen, 
Remember, hydrogens have one valence electron. I can bond over there. Then another hydrogen over there. Another hydrogen at the bottom. Obviously, I can't fit it in nicely. And another hydrogen on the side there. That's four bonds. And the reason why it can have four bonds is because it has four valence electrons. And remember, for carbon to be stable, it needs eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so carbon can be with itself, which we will see in a second, or it can bond to other atoms, like here it's bonding to a hydrogen. Okay, so that's what makes carbon special. What I mean by carbon can bond to itself is, here's a carbon, it can bond to itself like this. And then, it can have other bonds like this. Don't worry about this if this is freaking you out too much. We will get there. But basically, hydrogens can be on either side over here. You guys will see filling the, this in is a pain, filling your hydrogens in. But in total, each carbon atom has four bonds. So let's just check it out. Let me just change my pen color to red. Okay. Each carbon has four bonds. So one, two three, four. See that? The next carbon, the same thing. It has one, two, three, four bonds. Okay, so in that way, carbon can bond to itself or to other atoms. Yeah, I'm just repeating. Carbon has four valence electrons, which means it can form four covalent bonds, so it can combine with itself or with other atoms. And it can form single bonds, double bonds, or even triple bonds. Now this word isn't too important, but I just want you to know it and recognize it. Catenation, okay, catenation, catenation is the ability of carbon to make bonds with itself. So if they ever ask that in a multiple choice, what is the ability of carbon to make bonds with itself? Catenation. That means that carbon can bond with itself in a long chain or can form single bonds or double bonds or triple bonds. Here are some examples. Okay, so here, this first compound, we can see carbon. This carbon is bonding with itself. See, there's a row of one, two, three, four, five carbons. Same thing here, it's bonding with itself. Even here, but this is kind of bonding with itself in a loop. And here you can see other molecules attached to it, like there's oxygen, and then there's an OH. Okay, we will get there. But just recognize the chemistry of carbon. Okay, now hydrocarbons, organic compounds that consist of hydrogen and carbon only. That is another definition. Hydrocarbons, organic compounds consisting of hydrogen and carbon only. So if you see over there, that definition. So that means that there are certain organic compounds that only, only have hydrogen, H, and carbon C. Just like this one here. There's only H's and only C's. I don't see anything else. There's no oxygens, there's no whatever. Okay, and there's the slide again. What makes carbon carbon bonds unique? So you guys can read through that. It's not too important. Okay? But basically we can get a massive variety of products and that's why there are so many things that are called organic molecules because they're made up of carbons. And here is a beautiful organic molecule to end off this intro lesson, okay? Another thing, just to point out, every carbon has four bonds. One, whoops, one, two, three, four. Carbon can form bonds with itself and other molecules. And this is called organic molecules, molecules containing carbon atoms. Okay, so there's your first definition. Organic molecules, that should be in your book by now, molecules containing carbon atoms. And then the second one is hydrocarbons, this one over here. Organic compounds that consist of hydrogen and carbon only. Okay, guys, because I'm taking it slow, that's going to be it for the first lesson. Please just go over the slideshow, familiarize yourself with the terms. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.